Hello class, this is the video for 14.7, which is um, triple integrals in other coordinates. Uh, and I think applications is actually the next section. I might have mentioned that in the previous video at the very, very end. Um, but here first, we're going to actually have a go at evaluating triple integrals in other coordinates other than just rectangular coordinates, which are x, y, and z. Okay. So we're going to take a look at what we would get if it were in polar coordinates or if it were in spherical coordinates. Again, those coordinate systems are talked about more in pre-cal than they are in this class, um, but we do use them in this class. Okay, Sometimes it's just more convenient to use uh, polar coordinates or spherical coordinates. And sometimes the problems are given to you that way. So we definitely need to kind of jog back our memory on those from pre-cal. Um, as long as you know the conversions for them, you should be good. Um, so this problem set is not very long. There's only three main problems in this section. Um, and then the fourth, I believe, was a video. So I did not do number four because I don't want to give you away the answer. But I want you to watch the video, of course, right, and then answer the question. But um, all these problems do have some red stuff in there. So I did go ahead and, and, and do them and I'm gonna talk them out so that you can hopefully perform them and do them on your own. Um, so I have my bounds here. I believe I typed it incorrectly. Yeah. And so then I'm integrating this. Now the first variable of integration is R. So the cosine theta acts like a constant multiplier and the integral of R is R squared over two. And I do have to evaluate that at from zero to five, which were the bounds for R, okay? So then I end up with 25 minus zero, which is just 25. So I have 25 over two times the cosine. Um, then I have to uh, take the integral of this with respect to theta. So the 25 over two acts like the constant multiplier and the integral of cosine is just sine. And I evaluated that at the bounds. So when I plugged in pi over two, I got one. When I plugged in zero, I got zero. So it's really just 25 over two times one, which was 25 over two. But when you integrate this with respect to Z now, you're gonna get that constant times Z evaluated with these bounds. So I just put five minus the negative one, which is actually six. And so 25 over two times six is 75. And that's the final evaluation. Now here is a different one. It's got different bounds. The order still seems, ah, the order is different. Now they're doing dz first, then dr, then d theta, okay? So if we're doing dz first, that means the r is like a constant multiplier and the integral of z is z squared over two and the bounds for z were zero to five minus r. So when I plug in five minus r, I get this expression. When I plug in zero, zero squared over two is just zero. Um, and then, so I actually foiled this out and I got 25 minus 10 R plus R squared. And then I went ahead and distributed the R. So I got 25 um, and I split this up. I put each one over two. So I got 25 R over two. Here I would have negative 10 R squared over two, which is negative five R squared. And then here I would have R cubed over two, which is still there. Then I integrated. So I got 25 R squared over two, but there was already a two. So that's where the four came from. And then five R cubed over three. Here I get R to the fourth over four, but there was already a two there. So that's where the eight came from. Then when I plug in five in this expression, I get this fraction. When I plug in five into this expression, I get this number. And when I plug five into that expression, I end up with that number. I typed all of those numbers in my calculator and it gave me 625 over 24. So when I integrate this with respect to theta, I get that constant times theta evaluated at the bounds, which is pi over four minus zero, which is really just pi over four. So 625 pi over 24 times four, which was 96. So this was the response that we got there. And it was correct in our um, computer. So one last problem for us to cover, and then the last one is the video. And you have to be very, very careful with this one. I did it like two times because I kept making tiny little mistakes. Um, there's a lot of symbols going on here, and then I completely just, I don't know what I was doing, 
but I was not integrating cosine cubed correctly, that's for sure. So here's my bounds, zero to pi over two, zero to pi over four, zero to cosine theta, and then rho squared, sine of phi, cosine of phi, d rho, d theta, d phi, okay? So let's see, first, the variable of integration is rho. So I'm gonna integrate this rho. These guys are gonna act like a constant multiplier. So I get rho cubed over three evaluated from zero to cosine theta, which means that's cosine. I, oh, I took this third, this one third, and I brought it out all the way in the front. So that's where the one third came from, okay? Um, and so really I'm just plugging in the cosine and the zero into this cube. So I got cosine cubed minus zero cubed, which is a zero. And then, so I ended up with, okay, I knew that the next variable was theta. So I did two things here. One is I took this out of the integral that is integrating with respect to theta. So notice that in between these two integrals is the sine phi cosine phi, okay? Then I have the integral for d theta. And then I took that cosine cubed and broke it up into cosine squared times cosine. And then there's my d theta and then the d phi for this, this integral, okay? So then from here, I took the cosine squared theta and I broke it up into one minus sine squared theta. And then I distributed everything. So I did one times cosine of d theta and that's this guy. And then I did negative sine squared times cosine d theta and I got this one, okay? Once I figure out this integral, I still have this multiplied by it. And then I still, I'm gonna have to uh, integrate with respect to d phi, okay? So it's like I'm doing this inside integral and I split it up into two, okay? So I had to have those brackets in there. Um, now the integral of cosine theta is actually sine theta evaluated at our points. And then here I had to use u substitution. So I let u equal sine theta and then du is cosine theta d theta. So the sine theta becomes u, and so it's u squared, and then cosine theta d theta becomes du. So here, when I evaluate it, I'm just plugging in pi over four and zero. And here, when I integrate u squared du, I get u cubed over three. But I can't plug in my bounds because my bounds are for theta, okay? And this is just my notation to remind me that those bounds were for theta, not u, okay? Well, sine of pi over four is square root of two over two, sine of zero is zero, okay? Um, I took this, this guy right here and I pulled it out of the brackets, it's just where this one third came from. And so really I'm only plugging in these numbers into the cube, okay? So I got sine pi over four cubed minus sine zero cubed. Well, sine of pi over four is square root of two over two, but when I cubed square root of two over two, I ended up with square root of two over four. Sine zero is zero and zero cubed is still zero, okay? So I end up with um, inside this bracket here is square root of two over two. And then when I multiply those, I get minus square root of two over 12. This is one big fat constant multiplier. So I kicked it out of the integral altogether. And then I used um, substitution again. So I let, let w equal the sine of phi and then dw would be cosine of phi d phi. So the sine became the w and the cosine phi d phi became dw. And this integral is just w squared over two with all those constants in the front. And I have to evaluate it at pi over two, okay? So then um, I, but remember those are phi values. So I had to put w back in terms of phi. That, so that's sine of phi cubed over two. So I pulled the two out and brought it all the way over here with the three, which is where the one sixth came from. So that all I had to do was plug in the pi over two into the sine cubed expression. So I got sine of pi over two cubed and sine of zero cubed. Well, sine of pi over two cubed, um, what happened here? I didn't write this out, but let me do it. Sine of pi over two is one. So this becomes one cubed and this is zero cubed. So it's just one minus zero, which is just one. 
And so these fractions times a one is just those fractions, okay? So I did go ahead and get a common denominator. I multiplied this one by six and six. So I got six square root of two over 12 minus square root of two over 12. So six take away one was five square root of two over 12. And then if I multiply top times top and bottom times bottom, I ended up with five square root of two over 72, okay? So be very, very, very careful with that integration with the rows and the thetas and the phi's and all of that, okay? Um, but other than that, that is it for this section. The applications is actually the very last section of this chapter, which will be 14.8 in the next video, okay? Um, other than that, you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.